Skelly, MHK, uh, Enterprise Minister, is with us as well. How's the digital economy <coughs> going? This uh, new company, what's it, is it called? Gamesist? Yes, that's right. Uh, we we have um, this is a, actually I think a, a FTSE 250 company, um, e gaming company that's actually moving to the Isle of Man, and they are actually um, looking. I think about 20 jobs initially, but looking at accelerated growth once they can uh, land here on the island. So it's quite a big coup for us, actually, as I say, a big name. But it's worth highlighting that. Um, the uh, pipeline is really strong. It's as strong as it's ever been with regards to e-gaming. Um, and also, reputation is everything when it comes to e-gaming, having mm. a, 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 a particular jurisdiction that has integrity as well. Um, I'm not going to mention any names, uh, but Malta has had a, 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 a bad press recently as well. Um, we've always kept our nose clean regarding uh, uh, legislation haven't we? yeah and, and I think that's you know people say what is our USP you know and and you can talk about this particular industry but I think you can talk about a lot of industry the finance industry has been here for 40 50 years we've always regulated to a very high standard and the the very simple principle to that is uh, we we want you know, we, we really value reputation and uh, we want businesses who value their reputation but uh, obviously from a government and an island point of view having a, a good a spotless reputation is uh, vital uh, and that continues obviously as well uh, for decades it's happened whenever any new government particularly any labor government used to get in they used to mention the isle of man all the time uh, they always used to use the word the phrase tax haven all mm. the time and still why do you think the uk has never quite woken up to the fact that we actually know what we're doing well, it's historic, really, isn't it? Uh, you know, they they, uh, they they see us as an easy target, and sometimes we get picked up in uh, international media. But the reality is, you know, go back to Paradise Papers and so forth, you're going to find very little substance behind all that. Uh, but, of course, that doesn't make news later on, does it? So uh, you, you are stuck in that. But what I will say is that the businesses that do come here and do find us, uh, they do value, you know, the that regulation because it does, as I say, uh, reflect upon them as well as us as a government. Don't you ever feel that the Isle of Man should be a bit more proactive in just t saying to the UK, look, you know, you mentioned the Isle of Man, but you never go on about Dublin or Luxembourg. You never go on about Liechtenstein or Andorra and places like that. It's always the Isle of Man or Jersey and Guernsey. Well, we, we, we can speak to them, but the, ultimately they could, they're they also competition uh, at the same time. And uh, you have to look at it uh, from that perspective. But uh, again, going back to, to regulation, two areas that we're really working on and uh, involved with uh, blockchain, you're going back mm. to the digital esports where we're exploring at the moment. And the latest one that we will be looking at regulating will be medicinal cannabis so which is another uh, project that we have been working on on are now accelerating what's the situation regarding the hemp crop well, uh, all being well, if we get through our uh, regulations and transfer of functions and et cetera, and uh, quite frankly, it's been a very complex and lengthy journey. But uh, when you've got uh, eight different government uh, agencies working together, uh, I'm glad to say they have been working together, along with su uh, support from the UK Home Office, because we're talking about export, uh, we hope to see seed in the ground this next spring. Uh, what would you like to see? Uh, happen. I, 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 imagine we're at day one of medicinal cannabis being available. What would you say the situation will be on the Isle of Man? What do you want to see happen? Well, ultimately, the, the the first step is this. This is about export. Uh, initially, we always said it would be um, uh, domestic consumption, and uh, you know, obviously, the debate around recreation would be much much later. However, having said that, what we were focused in on is the uh, the export opportunity, and this is about investment in the island, and again, about attracting the right level of investment. Those who want uh, to be highly regulated, they do re want that reputational uh, position uh, correct, and uh, we. we we see that investment, we see those jobs, and we see a new sector born out of the Isle of Man. And it does have a, a real medical benefit, so it has a social benefit too. Is it going to happen? Well, the first transfer of function orders is uh, before Timbald next week. So, uh, yes, it uh, is definitely going to happen. What timetable would you would you see on that? Well, as I said there, uh, with regards to uh, the hemp, we should be able to see seed in the ground for uh, pilot crops uh, next year. That would be uh, a fantastic uh, start. And uh, we see uh, we would hopefully uh, be issuing licenses uh, in the first quarter for medicinal cannabis, which involves uh, a lot of what they call aquaponics, which is sort of indoor 
growing effectively, which are big energy users. And in a lot of time, in a lot of cases here, they're talking about energy, renewable energy, which also fits in with our uh, climate change agenda. Could you just explain as a question in regarding <coughs> online companies? Do they pay tax on the Isle of Man? How do we get any revenue from online companies? Well, we, we committed some time ago, of course, to a, um, a, a an economy of substance. So effectively, you've got to have something on the ground, some bricks and mortars here. So uh, I think the online companies or the brass plaques are maybe what they're referring to. Uh, whilst uh, we don't have corporation tax except for some businesses, uh, but we, we do have income tax and, of course, you know employment tax. So we rely on consumption tax. So we rely on that secondary taxation. So uh, th- that's why when you go back to that GameSys uh, organization they're coming here with 20 people originally but they're looking at scaling that up significantly mm. in the next few years so, so you can't just have a brass plaque and a server on the Isle of Man you you will struggle uh, in terms of your uh, tax compliance yes okay so it's a matter of getting people getting a company here as you say bricks mortar officers staff and obviously then ITIP will flow in national insurance and consumption uh, absolutely. And uh, consumption, you know, which we, we know only too well because we haven't lived through COVID, you know, where uh, the benefit that's been in our uh, domestic economy. Uh, Lawrence Skelly with us today. Um, I think there's a cable coming ashore. It maybe has come ashore at Port Aaron and Port Greenwich at the moment. This digital mm. cable from Denmark to um Dublin, I think it is as well. Why is it called uh, called off on the Isle of Man? Why is it stopped here? Well, it's it's actually given. It's an opportunity, really. It was a, literally going past our waters, and uh, it, it is part of our national broadband and telecoms uh, strategy. Is that we wanted to increase our resilience and uh, capacity, and the opportunity of bringing that in to our shores here is given us that uh, that prospect and that opportunity. And, uh, and it's worth pointing out is uh, again in terms of connectivity with the digital industry uh, growing here on the Isle of Man, they need that resilience, and that's another important factor. Do you know who's paid for that cable? Uh, we have contributed to it, but I can assure you that we have contributed to it at a, a, a very low sum compared to what its value will be to the island. Oh, so it's been commercially funded on the island? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, we talked about cannabis. Uh, the the whole broadband uh, scheme, of course, government's uh, given Manx Telecom, was it £15 million? Pounds? Uh, I think it's uh, about £11.5 million in, right. in total, yes. Uh, that's obviously <laughs> to roll out broadband and fibre right across the Isle of Man. Mm. Uh, and still we're seeing spots that aren't good. Uh, how how can that happen in 2020? Uh, yes, I, I, I know you do run you into... Must the, get, you must get uh, constituency moans about uh, this. Well, I think we all do from time to time, don't we, really? But what I would say is I think the coverage on the Isle of Man is, uh, and actually the connectivity on the island, because uh, that was a great concern, I have to say, as we were started with COVID and we all went into working from home, uh, relying on, on our, not just from work, but also all our entertainment. So uh, the critical infrastructure in terms of the uh, broadband and so forth, telecoms uh, stood up very, very well. This will enhance that uh, that particular position, and uh, clearly we want 99% of the island to have access to the ultra-fast broadband, so uh, we are accelerating that uh, role as we speak. 18 minutes to one. Lawrence Kelly, MHK, with us on the man in line today. At uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon, the Chief Minister will be on live from the COVID-19 briefing. You can hear that live on Max Radio and see it on Facebook and on YouTube as well. On Monday Monday, Home Affairs Minister Graeme Krajean, MHK, will be live on the Man in Line. Next Wednesday, David Ashford will be accompanied by Henrietta Ewart from the Health and Social Care Department. And a week on Monday, the 21st, Alfred Cannon, Treasury Minister, live on the Man in Line. (laughs) 